Many people who have a laptop, especially a gaming laptop, have a problem with overheating and think about buying a cooling pad. Welcome to How Fix It. In this video, I'm going to explain in which cases a cooling pad can be effective. And also, I'll test the vacuum fan for cooling efficiency. I recommend watching this video. At the end, I will give you some advice on what to do even if the cooling pad doesn't solve the laptop overheating problem. Before buying a cooling pad, ensure your laptop is not overheating due to dust clogging of the cooling system. In 90% of the cases, laptop overheating is caused by dust. If you have never cleaned your laptop or changed the thermal paste, this is probably why your laptop overheats. There are many video instructions on the How Fix It channel, using which you can clean your laptop. And if the overheating remains after cleaning, then go to the cooling pad. First, check if the cooling pad will be effective when paired with your laptop. As an example, I took several laptops from different manufacturers to demonstrate in which cases a cooling pad will give real results in dropping temperatures. Turn the laptop over and check the air vents on the bottom cover of your laptop case. For example, my laptop has a ventilation grill on the bottom cover. And now you can see that there is direct access for blowing through this grill. In this case, we can conclude that a cooling pad can be effective when paired with this gaming laptop. And now we check it out. Let's begin to test the cooling pad on the Dell G5 gaming laptop in the stress test mode for at least 15 minutes. The first 15 minute test, just a laptop without a cooling pad, shows a temperature of 73 to 76 degrees Celsius. The second 15 minute test is already carried out with a cooling pad and I get 68 to 73 degrees Celsius. And for the experiment, I remove the bottom cover for a third 15 minute test with a cooling pad. Now the cooling pad blows air directly onto the heat conducting tubes. As a result, we get 67 to 72 degrees Celsius. I averaged the temperatures and got the following results. No cooling pad temperature, 75 degrees Celsius. With cooling pad, 70 degrees Celsius. With cooling pad and without bottom cover, 69 degrees Celsius. As a result, minus 6 degrees Celsius. Next cooling pad test on the MSI GE62 gaming laptop. This laptop model has the most suitable bottom cover for a cooling pad. There are well open grills for blowing the fans and heat conducting tubes. In this case, I only ran two 15 minute stress tests and got the following results. As you can see, the temperature was lowered a little, but not very significant, minus four degrees Celsius. Next cooling pad test on the Asus TUF gaming laptop. This laptop model has small ventilation holes. It doesn't look promising, but let's check the results of efficient cooling. In this case, the result can be surprising. No cooling pad temperature, 79 degrees Celsius. With cooling pad, 66 degrees Celsius. Despite the small air ventilation holes, the effectiveness of the cooling pad is clearly visible, and it lowered the temperature by 13 degrees Celsius. It actually isn't as counterintuitive as one would think at first glance. Smaller intake grills placed right on key components help maintain the engineered airflow, where large open areas cause turbulence that interferes with the most efficient airflow. So the consistency and efficiency of the airflow are more important than just the overall volume of the airflow. Next comes the Asus ROG Zephyrus Gaming Laptop. I took this laptop model as an example in which there is no point in using the cooling pad because there are no holes on the bottom cover for ventilation. Without any air vents, the cooling pad is not effective because the bottom plastic plate or thin aluminum is first not in direct contact with any heating elements, nor is it particularly thermally conductive. This laptop has air vents located on the inner cover above the keyboard. In the case of the Asus ROG Zephyrus, only the undervolting CPU will help. I left a link in the description. Everything is the same with the Dell XPS 9365 laptop, which has a completely closed bottom cover. It's the same with the Apple MacBook Pro and Apple MacBook Air models. The bottom cover of these laptops is without ventilation grills. The best thing you can do here is clean dust and replace thermal paste to reduce overheating. The next laptop is the Asus UX461. This is a very interesting case when a cooling pad is not effective. You can see a ventilation grill on the bottom cover, but if you remove the bottom cover, you will see that this grill doesn't give direct access to blowing the cooling system. So the cooling pad is not effective in this case. 
And before you go buying a cooling pad, make sure the air vents give direct access to the laptop cooling system. Now let's test the efficiency of a vacuum fan paired with a cooling system. How it works. The vacuum fan is installed next to the ventilation grill and pulls hot air out of the laptop. The kit includes silicone tips. All four have different sizes and angles. Next, check which silicone tip adheres as well to the ventilation grill of your laptop. But here, you should know that the vacuum fan is not universal. In some cases, it will not be in close contact with the vent grill, and efficiency will be lost. I took my warmest laptop for this test, based on the Core i7-3630QM CPU and the GeForce GT650 GPU. No cooling pad, the temperature is very high, 96 degrees Celsius. Then I test with the cooling pad and remove the bottom cover for a direct blowing of the heat conducting tube. I get a significant decrease in temperature, 81 degrees Celsius. In the final test, I connect a vacuum fan, complete with the cooling pad, and temperature drops to 77 degrees Celsius. As a result, the temperature was reduced by as much as 19 degrees Celsius, so the vacuum fan helped reduce the temperature by 5 degrees Celsius. Let's summarize the results of the test with and without the cooling pad. The cooling pad is really effective, but the level of efficiency is different for each laptop. If the laptop is cleaned from dust, the cooling pad will reduce heat from 5 to 15 degrees Celsius, but it all depends on the air vents in your laptop's bottom cover. Of course, you can drill ventilation holes yourself, but this is a topic for another video. A vacuum fan can also be useful and reduce the temperature by a couple of degrees, but you should not expect more from it. How to choose the right laptop cooling pad? The size of a 13-inch and 17-inch laptop is different, so the cooling pad must match the size of your laptop. How many fans are better for the cooling pad? The number of fans doesn't matter for its efficient cooling. The main thing is the fan's location on the cooling pad matches the vents on the laptop's bottom cover. It may just be two fans, but they have to be aimed directly at the ventilation grills and give more efficient airflow than a cooling pad with five fans. So the direct airflow is more important than just the overall volume of the airflow from five fans. Expensive cooling pad or a cheap one? There isn't much difference between the cooling pad for $20 and $50. At most, it will be design differences. You can find a wide choice of the best laptop cooling pads on Amazon. I left links in the description. And in conclusion, if your laptop doesn't have ventilation grills or the cooling pad didn't help solve the problem with overheating, I recommend watching the video about undervolting CPU and a video where I show all possible ways to fix laptop overheating. For more info, check out the links in the description. So guys, that's all. You are on how fix it. And see you next time.